everybody. Welcome to the Logan Power Show. It's me, your host, Calvin Logan. Uh, I am excited. I'm elated about what's about to happen today. A move of God's going to move like no tomorrow. So I want you all that are plugged in. Let's get plugged in. Uh, we're bringing back to us uh, part two of Pastor Ora Quick here at the Logan Power Show. We're going to talk about pretty much is uh, how can you pastor when the organs are not playing? L ladies and gentlemen, the one and only <laughs> Pastor Ora Quick. Yes, sir. So it's your turn to come on through. And uh, I want you, sir, to lead the people and tell us what needs to be done. And let's go. It's on you, sir. Um, I, I guess one of the things that I learned to do um, uh, many years ago, God showed me something. And uh, it, it was it, I've always been a type of pastor where I couldn't memorize scripture. And I couldn't, I, I just couldn't remember it. And one day God said to me, Auric, I'm going to open up your mind, open up your spirit to receive. And ever since then, I have literally been memorizing paragraphs and scriptures and so much because Jesus said, he said, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. So I guess the thing that I love about the Lord is that it's, it's according to your faith. It's based on what, it's based on how much you put into it. And a lot of people have issues with their faith or things happening or seeing a miracle uh, in their life. It's because everything is based on time. It's based on the light time that you spend with God. But, um, per perfect example. Um, what, one of my... Um, when, when my oldest daughter, uh, Victoria, when we had her baby shower, um, when she was in my, my wife's womb, um, God spoke to me, you know, after she had came and everything, and God spoke to me and he said, Auric, where was Victoria when, uh, when you all had the baby shower? I said, well, she was in my wife's womb. He said, exactly. He said, everything that you will ever need is actually here in the earth before you get here and 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 then he said um he said but what types of gifts did she receive i said well she got she got toys she got uh clothing she got um even uh, even stuff that was you know beyond her age at the time you know she, she got clothing for six to twelve um um i don't know nine to twelve months or no, you know, things that she could not use right when she came out as a baby. And God said to me, he said, Auric, there are some blessings that you have to grow into. Mm. That, that there are some blessings that you mature into. That there are some blessings, they will not be released upon your life until you have matured in the spirit realm to receive what they what they want to give to you. So God showed me, he showed me an illustration. All the gifts that Victoria had that she couldn't play with as a baby, we stored them in a closet. So, and <laughs> it was amazing. Um, as she grew up, every year, she would go to the same closet and find something that she was interested in because she was old enough to understand. Ah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 there, there are blessings that only come with you spending time with God. There are certain things, they're actually waiting for you. So, so one of the blessings that, that God has given me is that, man, I just enjoy spending time with God. And when you, and when you enjoy spending time with God, he said in his word, he said, delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And so when you break this word delight down, the actual definition of the word delight is a high degree of pleasure, enjoyment, joy, rapture. That is the actual definition of the word delight. In other words, and I, when I saw the word rapture, I said, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you saying? Rapture, the, the word rapture means the carrying of a person to another place or another dimension. Hmm. 
I said, so what are you saying? He says, Ori, you can enjoy me so much that it will take you away from your problems. That it will literally pick you up and allow you to rapture out of your issue, out of your concern, and be in the presence of the Lord. The Bible says in Psalms 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of, my, uh, the, shadow of the Almighty. And so, and so, what, what, what I've learned is I've learned how to do what Joseph did. You, you, you got to see, Joseph didn't have a pretty life. He didn't have, everything didn't line up in his life like he, like he really, really wanted it to. The man was, he, he, was, um, he was sold into slavery by his own brothers. Uh, he, was, uh, he lived the life as a slave. He was falsely accused left in jail for two years until finally something broke in his life. And I asked God, God, how do you survive things out of the norm? How do you survive COVID-19? How do you survive issues that you go through that last a good little time? And he said, or you got to learn how to rapture. You got to learn how to spend time with me so much that it picks you up and places you and the destination of your dreams, even while your body is in turmoil. I, I, I pray that that makes sense. <laughs> makes sense. It makes sense. Yes, sir. It makes sense. Definitely. It makes sense on what you are saying. And that's why I want to, you know, definitely keep what you're doing in play. Uh, so I know a lot of us, one of you, some of y'all who are watching right now. So pastor, uh, while I'm talking, I know we're trying to get ourselves back with the live and everything here. What are some things that that you believe that God is telling you that you have to do now in this season? Because right now the organ's not playing. We exactly. don't got no music playing. Right now it's real exactly. talk. So what can we do to keep that flow going? Well, well, the the only thing, see, sometimes, see, I guarantee you, before all this COVID-19 broke out, there were a lot of pastors who were saying, Lord, I'm tired. I'm, I'm just a little tired. I'm, I just need just a little area, just a time for, for me to be refreshed so I can come back stronger. And that's what it's kind of done for a lot of pastors is giving them that rest, giving them um, the ability to recoup. Um, because, you know, as a pastor, we do do a lot. You know, we do a lot for a lot of individuals, people in the church, whether you're a member or not. You know, I, that's one thing I can say for me is that by the grace of God, um, I treat a lot of people like they're members, even though they're not members. And so as a pastor, sometimes you, you have to learn how to rapture just so you can function, so you can escape stress, so you can escape worry, so you can escape anxiety, all these different things. And the way that you do that is simply being able to spend time with God, dwelling in the presence of God. And so COVID-19, in a way, has given a lot of pastors rest. You know, it's given them the ability to recoup and to be able to recover and um, um, be, be able to just come back and come back stronger than they were before. Amen. Amen. I pray that answers your questions. Oh, that, question. that, that answers it. Yes, sir. It definitely answers it. Uh, so... So I want to do right now is welcome y'all here to the Logan Power Show. I know we had a little couple things going on in the back end, but I want you to know that we are here to, to make it happen for y'all. Uh, I want you to listen right now. We're listening to Pastor Or Quick here in the Logan Power Show. We're, we're delighted to have him here and to just be a part of what we're doing. Uh, this is going to be a time to where we hear uh, that are listening to me right now that we're going to – just go to the upper room experience because that's what I want. I mean, I, yeah. want the, I want the upper room experience. I want God to change some things. I want things to happen. Uh, now, right now, for those that are listening, we were talking about part one, uh, how the pastors get more involved in the community. Now, Pastor Oric, um, did something different. Like you didn't, like when he had the little message, he was talking to the chief of police and he's asking them, could, would you denounce yeah. this type of, racism this type of hatred where you ask all 255 officers would you ask them all to denounce what's going on i'm not asking you to maybe and then can you march with me tell us about that experience what you happened in your in your neck of the woods sir 
Yeah, so uh, th this all happened on, on last Sunday. And, you know, the, <laughs> the funny thing about it is that if, if, if you just say that you're willing, God will throw you right in the mix of that thing. And what, what a lot of people uh, don't realize is that when I saw the march and um, when, I, when I saw everything was going on, I said, Lord, if there's anything you want me to do, I am willing to do it. And, and one of my ministers heard me say that because we had just got finished with um, a church service outside. He heard me say that. And so w once I said that, God started aligning everything, putting things into place to put me at the right place at the right time in front of the police chief. <laughs> and right there, <laughs> it's amazing how God sets all this stuff up. I just said, God, I'm willing. And God will start to line things up. So I, I, I went to the police chief. You know, because he, he asked us, he said, okay, what are you looking for for us to do? What do you need for us to do? Because, of course, um, what, ha what everyone's upset is what happened in Minneapolis. Everyone is upset about what happened to George Floyd. And, and, and the police officers here are like, I understand that didn't happen here, but, you know, what can we do? You know, and what, I can what God gave to me, he said, have them to denounce what happened to George Floyd. And I, I, <laughs> I didn't think about this um, before I got there. On the spot, God said that he would give you what to say in the self-same hour. On the spot, God said, go act, have them to uh, denounce it. So the police chief right there in front of everyone, he denounced it in public in front of everybody. But then God said, well, let's take it a little bit deeper. Let's take it a little bit closer. And I said, sir, are you willing to have all of your off? I asked him, how many officers do you have? Or how many positions do you have? He said roughly about 255. And he said, I said, are you willing to allow them to get them to denounce what happened or the behavior that led up to George Floyd's death? And uh, uh, I, I think it surprised him a little bit because <laughs> he, he didn't see it coming. But he shook my hand and said, sure. He said, yes, sir, I will. And that is what led up to um, this march that we're having right here in High Point, North Carolina, uh, where we're expecting at least 2,000 people. We're expecting a great outpouring. So many people have been asking, you know, what can we do? Can we bring water? Because it's going to be hot. <laughs> it's going to be hot. It's going to be about 80 something degrees. So it's going to be hot. But it's, uh, when you're willing to do whatever it takes, when you're willing to do something for a cause, for a man who gave up his life submitting to the officer's request. If, if you watch the video, he never squirmed. If you watch the video, George, George Floyd, he never tried to turn over. He, tried, he never tried to flip over. He submitted to the very man that was trying to, that, that killed him. And so what, what, what we are going to do, if this man sacrificed his life, at least we can do is march for this man at least we can do is bring up put a march uh, uh 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 bring officers bring the community together to remember the life of george floyd so that's what this march is about uh here in high point and you can also register on eventbrite um and now the theme the theme for the march is one nation for justice one nation for justice, whether you're black, white, Asian, Korean, doesn't matter. If you feel that what happened to George Floyd was wicked, despicable at his best, then you should join this march. You should come and walk with us. If you if you don't if you don't think there's anything wrong with it, then you probably should stay home <laughs> because that that's not what we're about. We're about uh, uh, understanding that justice must be served. Concerning this situation, he, he, he okay, I, I, I'm going to say something. Most people, when they see a black man, they say, well, he was just a black man. And that, that is the biggest problem that I believe that we have in America now. They, they say he's a black man, but even when you say a black man, you consider a black man a lesser form of a man. And so why not just say he was a man? He was a man made by his hand. Made, 
made by God's hand. And so I appreciate and I thank God for everyone that has raised up the African-American community to the point where we at least have the status of a man. Because hundreds of years ago, it was, it was dogs that ate better than us. It was dogs that was treated better than us. We didn't even have the status of a human being. But over the progress over the years, we have raised the status of, of, of being a slave to a man, now uh, to a black man, but now we gotta go a little bit higher. I'm not just a black man, I am a man. I am a human being. And if that officer would have saw George Floyd as a man and not as a black man, I believe he would still be alive today. Wow. Wow. So you just heard it first live at the Logan Power Show, June the 7th, 1230 p.m. in High Point, High Point, North Carolina. Once again, we want to I want to give you all the information so that you'll have it uh, right now. Um, I know I was putting some things in the live while past Orc. It's one nation for justice. One nation for justice. Sunday, June the 7th, 1230 p.m. Register for it's free. One nation for justice. com. Hey, if you live in the High Point, North Carolina area, if you're in North Carolina, hey, you got nothing to do. Um, if like I say, if your church doors ain't open and you got so you got Sunday service through the Zoom or yeah. whatever you do, a phone call, hey, make that phone call and make and make it a march. Because my thing about it is it's time that we as a body of Christ get busy, um, not get lazy, but moving it forward. Uh, final thought here, Pastor Org. Um, people are watching. Healing needs yeah. to be done. Yeah. What do you want to see happen on June the 7th? What do you want to see happen for the body of Christ when you step foot on this coming Sunday at 1230 p.m.? Well, I guess the difference between this march and a lot of others is that this march is going to be led by the clergy. This march is going to be led by pastors, preachers, men, and women of God, like it has been in, in the past times. And so what I want to see is simply the, uh, the police chief, of course, keeping his word and doing everything he said that he was going to do, um, re regardless of how that's going to be done. Um, but he's, he's, I, I believe that he is going to keep his word and, and keep his end of the bargain. But, you know, in order for healing, to start, you got to first acknowledge that there's hurt. You got to first acknowledge that something is wrong. Something is off. And by the police chief and his officers saying, we denounce what happened to Mr. Um, uh, Mr. George Floyd. We denounce that type of behavior here in High Point. That's where the healing is going to begin. Healing sometimes doesn't start until you first say, look, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, you, you got to start with an apology first or, or at least say, that's not me. And if you watch the video, there was a guy who was standing right beside me uh, on Facebook and he was talking while I was talking and he was saying things that I didn't agree with. And I turned to my left. I said, y'all, I don't know who this is, but I'm not with him. <laughs> and that's what that's what officers across the nation have to do. They have to stand up and say, hey, we're not with them. I'm not with them. With what they did, that's not what we do here. Got it. Got it. Got it. So, ladies and gentlemen, you just heard it again. Pastor Orr, quick, um, something you want to get connected with. June the 7th, 1230 p.m., you want to get connected with this march. Again, this is going to change your life. Uh, I promise you this. Um, if you give him an opportunity, your life will change. Uh, I don't take it lightly. Uh, if I was in the area, definitely I'd be coming up. Once again, One Nation for Justice, June the 7th, 1230 p.m. Website, one nation for com. Let's pack it out. Let's see Jesus move. And let's yes. do our time here. Well, hey. That's all the time I got. My name is Calvin Lowe, the Logan Power Show, nationwide, worldwide. We love you. We appreciate you. And yes. we will see you soon. God bless.